welcome to the program today. God bless you. I'm Pastor Jesse Moodley. Today is a very, very special day. It's not just Sunday. It's not just us worshiping God together, but it's a day that is marked for every special mother. Amen. It's Mother's Day. And I want to wish every single mom a very happy, blessed Mother's Day to you. What a privilege it is for us to be mothers. Amen. Today, you're going to get a special blessing from the Lord. You know how God loves mothers, right? You know how God loves it when you worship Him, when you pray. God is going to come into your home. He's going to touch you right at your point of need. Today is your day. So enjoy giving God all the glory that He so richly deserves. We are joined with Pastor Adrian Singh from Durban today, who's going to worship with us. I want you to be so free in your home today. Mothers, just enjoy giving God all the praise and glory. Make a lot of room for yourself and just jump around, run around, you know, just worship God with all of your heart. Amen. Let's sing together. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. You are good, so, so good. You are, oh, you are so good. God is so good from generation to generation. His love and His mercy endures forever. I want you to just enjoy worshipping the Lord our God. As the deer pants after the water, so my soul pants after you. Amen. This, this day, we're going to glorify God. Let's lift our hands to Him and let's worship Him. Let's yield our spirit to our God this morning. Just love and honor and adore your holy name, Lord. Thank you for granting us your word, Lord God. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Lord, turn His face toward you and give you peace. Lord, bless you and keep you, make His face shine upon you. And be gracious to you, Lord, turn His face toward you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. 
make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Sing Amen. He's with you in the morning, 
in the evening and you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing here's where you here's where you oh we love you lord jesus oh what a mighty presence god goes before you God goes behind you. He's beside you, within you. He is with you. Every day, he is with you. Amen. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. I want you to get ready for a precious and powerful word that God is going to place into your heart this morning. Receive what God is going to speak into your life. His word is going to change you. His word is going to mold you and shape you. Know that his presence is with you. And I want you to get ready. Take notes down. Get ready to be in the presence of God, seated at his table, surrounded by his glory. And I want you to eat what God is serving for you today. Amen. We love you. I want you to get ready for the offering our pastors are going to share with you a powerful word of offering today. And I want you to get ready to sow your seed. Don't forget to name it. And I want you to follow the prompts on the screen so that you can learn how to sow into the kingdom of God. And you can be a part of extending this powerful global ministry. Amen. God bless you. Greetings to all our viewers in the name, the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. It is an awesome privilege to stand before you and deliver the offering word today. I would like to thank my spiritual parents, Pastor Siva and Pastor Jesse Mudley for having given me this opportunity. My scripture is taken from the book of Haggai chapter 1. In this book, it speaks about the Israelites who had just returned from Babylon, permitted by the king of Persia to go back and build the temple in Jerusalem. And they were excited to build the temple in Jerusalem and they started work on it. As they started the work, their excitement fizzled down because there was a famine in the land and also there was opposition from the local pagan residents. It sounds familiar to the situation we are in right now. However, at that time, there was prophet Haggai spoke the word of the Lord to the people. He encouraged Zerubbabel and the high priest Joshua to and the remnant of the people to go and build the temple of the Lord so that the Lord comes first, so that the kingdom comes first. Catching on from verse 7 in the book of Haggai chapter 1. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways, go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple, that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. In verse 14 it says, I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Jeshua, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. But the work was stopped. But after this, they were encouraged and they built the house of the Lord under the leadership of the governor Zerubbabel because they just obeyed the word of the Lord spoken by Haggai. Jesus said in Matthew 6.33, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And by these things, he meant the worries of food and clothing and stuff like that. During the situation that we are in, we have to keep the kingdom of God top priority in our lives. Giving into the house of God is the first most thing that we must do. And God then ensures that he will take care of every need that we have. By giving, you're ensuring that the voice of God, the voice of the Miracle Center is reached out to the ends of the world through this amazing platform. By partnering with us, you are also partaking in the grace and favor that is in this house. Thank you once again. As you get prepared to give now, you can give to us by paying into our bank account, which is available in sivamundli.com slash give and it will give you the details of the bank account where you can pay via EFT or you can pay via any international card from the option that's given there. You can also scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen and it will take you to the same page. Thank you viewers for your giving today. God bless you. We are praying for all your individual needs that you have right now or also for the needs of the church. Let's all pray together. I would like you guys to also bow your heads as we pray over this offering. Father God, I thank you for each and every person that is giving today. We are giving to you happily 
cheerfully, sacrificially a significant amount for the purposes of your kingdom, for the house of God. Oh Lord, I ask you, Lord, that every giver is blessed today, that the offering is blessed for your glory. And Lord, enlarge the provision, enlarge the seed storehouse of every person that is giving to you today so that they can give more into the house of God, more for the purposes of the kingdom. Thank you, Lord, that we are a blessing unto the kingdom today. Thank you, Lord, for all the favor and blessing that is in our lives already and the great plans that you have prepared for us in the coming days. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Wow! Welcome to the program today. This is Pastor Siva Mudli. And I'm Pastor Jesse Mudli. We have an exciting, exciting, exciting program for you today. Amen. God's going to move mightily and you are going to be shaken right where you are. And welcome for whichever part of the world you're watching us. Uh, please tell us firstly where you're watching us from. Uh, if you can quickly tell that to our, whichever stream you're watching us on. Go to the chat on that stream. We're monitoring all the streams. There's uh, 12 different streams. And uh, whichever stream you're watching on, just tell us where you're watching from and your name. And uh, we just want to greet you. Mm. And while you're doing that, uh, we have a very, very powerful program today. Absolutely Amen. Powerful. We have one of God's generals themselves on yes. the program. <laughs> Amen. I mean... Uh, we have so many wonderful, mighty, anointed guests on our program. Uh, next week, Sunday, we have, sorry, next Wednesday, next week, we Sunday. have uh, Billy Burke, Evangelist Billy Burke, a mighty man of God. But today on the program, I'm very excited because the person we have on the program uh, is a brilliant scholar of the word, an anointed man of God. And uh, I've, read his, uh, I've read some of his books, right, and I've watched um, uh, is the DVDs, yes. right? And, <laughs> and, and you know, the so ones much. I'm talking about is God's generals. Amen. I know you probably watched it. It's one of the most amazing books uh, that I've ever read and one of the most amazing uh, DVDs I've ever watched. And I watched it over and, and, over, over, and over and over again, again. because yeah. there's so much of knowledge. And it comes from a mighty man of God who has so much of knowledge. So we're going to introduce him in a minute or two. But before we do that, uh, whichever stream you're watching us on, please share the stream. Uh, if you're on Facebook, share the Facebook stream. You can be on Instagram, Facebook, Periscope, Twitch, Daily Demotion, YouTube, share the stream. Amen. You can connect to us uh, via WhatsApp. The, the, uh, the WhatsApp number is on the screen right now. And uh, uh, let's just see. Wow. I want to quickly just greet some people that are watching us from around the world. There is Shamin from Port Elizabeth, uh, Minani from New York, uh, Jitho from Kerala in India, Diana from Tanzania, Mukuku from Zambia, Jessica from Mossel Bay, Pemi from the United Kingdom, Paul from Malawi, Dojinus from Namibia, Arnold from Bloemfontein, Clive from uh, uh, Eastern Cape, Bakre from Nigeria, Mark from Ghana, uh, Judy from Kenya, Samuel from Cape Town, uh, uh, Pato from Uganda, uh, Samang from Botswana, Belina from Zimbabwe, Esther from India, more people from Muscle Bay, People from Impobalanga, Johannesburg, Durban, uh, more people in Texas, uh, in the UK, from all over the world. Amen. <laughs> Wherever you're welcome watching us everyone. from, welcome to the program today. We're so excited to have you on the program and I know you're going to be blessed. Amen. Mm. Now, today on the program, Jesse, mm. we have, would you like to, to introduce our guest? Now, before, I'm oh, sorry, I'm going to start, I'm, I'm going to cut him off again now, right? I think so. We met him through our very good friend, Adrian Singh. Yes. Amen. A mighty man of God. You heard him earlier on in the praise and worship. And yesterday was Adrian Singh's birthday. birthday. It was also 
Pastor Jesse's birthday. Mm -hmm. It was also who else's birthday? Terry McAlvin's. Terry McAlvin's birthday. birthday. So all the worship leaders, they had their birthdays yesterday. Amen. <laughs> And I, I know you probably think, but I'm not, I, I'm not born on that date. Well, you're also a mighty worship leader. But these guys, I don't know, there's something. What went on on the 12th of May? Was there some conspiracy going on? There definitely on or? was. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> right. Okay. So today on the program, will you introduce our guests, please? Church. And everyone watching, a very, very good evening to you. God bless you. Today we have a mighty, mighty man of God, Dr. Robert Layden. And today we're going to introduce him to you, to every single one of you. So get ready, get your notepads uh -huh. out. You're going to take down some notes. You're going to hear about how God has touched and moved in his life and how he's going to share about how the God's generals were used by the mighty Amen. hand of God. But that's not the only But thing he's going to share. He's been to heaven. Yes. When he was so a I have a lot one. of questions about I heaven. Know. Amen. And no uh, <laughs> pressure. No pressure, Dr. Roberts. <laughs> so welcome to the program, Dr. Roberts. Good to be with you all of you. Later. God bless you. you you're coming all the way from um, uh, Florida. Amen. Is that right? Florida's where I live and have my home. Yes. Amen. So good, so good to have you on the program today, and uh, we are so excited to have you on the program. Now, I want to get good to be with you and to meet you and and to meet your wife. You have a very beautiful you. wife. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor. Thank you. Um, she cost me a lot of money. I had to pay for her. You know. <laughs> okay. Never mind. We will come to that some other time. <laughs> okay. Good. Right. So. Today on the program, uh, Dr. Roberts, we have a lot of questions for you because you are one of the Bible scholars in our time. Amen. One of the major Bible scholars. And uh, more than that, you're also quite an anointed man of God. I've watched some of your ministry. Mm -hmm. I've seen uh, God work through you. And uh, I know that you um, you grew up in, um, what was this place, uh, uh, where all Roberts University is, right? Uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. In Oklahoma. Tulsa, Tulsa. Tulsa, Oklahoma? Is Tulsa. that correct? It's yeah. a, yes, it's above Texas. Everybody knows yeah. where Texas is at. It's one state above. <laughs> it's above yeah. them, yeah. We, we yeah. actually were in um, Broken Arrow in yeah. Tulsa, yeah. Oklahoma. We went there. And uh, we yeah. went to ORU's will and so on. So I'm, I'm just so honored to have you on the program today. So It's good to there be are with many, you. many people here in Africa and around the world that's watching us, but especially mm -hmm. Africa, uh, they've, they've read about God's generals. But tell us about, just quickly tell us, before we get into the, into the nuts and bolts today, tell us about Robert Laydon. Am, am I pronouncing it right? Is that Laydon? Close enough, Laredon. Laodon. Yeah, yes. Okay, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Robert's Laodon's ministry. Tell us about it. Well, it began in 1984 when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And I began preaching when I was 12 and a half years old. Mm -hmm. So I was a kid preacher. And by the time I was 17, I had a full-blown operating ministry in America. And then in my early 20s, we went international. Mm -hmm. And uh, we built over 40 churches. And wow. built, I think, about four accredited Bible schools. Uh, we've written, I've written 84 books, sold 17 million in English. We have, um, we've done everything you, you, that you would do to be a, what you call a success ministry, built Amen. buildings, bought planes, did, I mean, did it all. Amen. But, uh, and, uh, and I did it all before I was 50. So in my life, I feel like I get to live twice because all that you're referring to is the first half of my life. Uh -huh. And then I do, I woke up one day to give a little story. I woke up one day and I realized most of my friends were, in the sunset years of their life, or they had already gone on to heaven to the reward. Mm -hmm. And I was the young guy again, because I began preaching with them when I was in my 20s, and they were in their 40s. Mm -hmm. So as we progressed, and then I could sit, I thought, well, I could tell people I could be a life coach, or I could be this and that, and I could kind of just, you know, float on what I've done over the last 40 years. And I decided not to do that. I decided to not be a coach or a mentor as a career, but 
to go back out and go to the fields of harvest and work and work the last half of my life in the same place I begin the first half. Because I don't want to be a has-been while I'm alive. I want to be a doer, and I want to die among all the young people being like Lester Summerall was to us when we were young. And so I've begun again. I've started a new church in Orlando. I've got another church I just built about six months ago in Southern California. Mm-hmm. We're planning to open up our Bible school again for Spirit-Filled Ministry because in America, Spirit-Filled Ministry is beginning to shrink and people are making fun of it. So I'm ready to fight that battle and build more churches and Holy Ghost preachers. And Because if we give in to the evangelical academic thing, we've lost Christianity in America. And as long as I'm alive, we shall fight. And we shall keep the supernatural and the spirit filled. A lot of people watching see the big TV ministries that are there, but that's not always the reality of what's on Main Street in America. Mm. And America has become a mission field now. We're a first-class mission field. We have the best cars. That's We have the best food. That's why we're all fat over here. We have all the best of everything. And uh, so we, we have first-class, but we don't have the same power that we had when I was a young man. Mm. And so there's a new generation coming that is like, you know, like Gideon that said, you know, we've heard about it. We've heard about it, but they've never seen it. Mm-hmm. So let's help them do more than hear about it. Let's help them experience it. And you don't experience great things unless you get where great things have to happen. As long as you're in a place where there's no sickness, there's no miracles. Mm-hmm. When you're in a place where you don't need any money, there's no miracle money. So you have to get out there where you need miracles and then they show up. If you live in the safety of your own talent and the other people's blessings, and you'll not get the miracles that we talk about. You have to get out of the boat and walk on the water and jump off the cliff. And if God don't catch you, you're dead, but God always catches you. And that's where the great miracles come from. So that's my introduction to everybody. Amen. Awesome. 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 Wow. Now, you said something important. You said that there is a revival that's happening now. And there's a, and it's in America, and I believe to the rest of the world as well. From, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just going a little bit from uh, off the questions I wanted to ask you initially. What do you believe God is telling us in this hour? What's happening in this hour uh, from, from, from your perspective? Well, I guess you're referring to the virus crisis that yeah. the whole world is in. Yeah. Uh, I am 54 years old, and this is the first time all my friends are doing the same thing at the same time. We all over the world, whether I talk to my friends in Asia or the folks there in Africa or Europe or South, they're all home and we're all online talking to each other and doing church online. We're all doing the same thing. So to me, it is a worldwide event, which means we have a worldwide uh, revival that goes with it. I think, number one, God did not cause the virus. He did not send it to judge people or to judge nations. I don't believe God is in that type of dealing with man. Mm -hmm. He dealt with Christ on the cross in that way. He deals with us in a different way. Mm -hmm. And so, but the good that God can bring out of it is where I would look at it. So I would say, number one, a lot of my America, I'll talk from the American perspective, Mm -hmm. the American idols have fallen. Uh, Our big entertainment idol in America has fallen to the ground. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hollywood, uh, as of two weeks ago, had lost $20 billion and there's... All of our movie theaters are closed. All that we have in the world of entertainment is TV and Netflix and these kind of things. And that's Mm -hmm. not the entertainment. There's no new movies. Mm -hmm. All the releases have been stopped. So that idol has fallen to the ground. And in the American culture, the entertainment God said, we are better than God or equal to God. And it's like him being in the Ark of the Covenant and the day God. And then they fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. Hopefully when they come back up, they'll have a different heart. And I would hope that they would judge themselves and think, how many murders do we show the world a day? How many rapes do we show the world? Can we clean up Mm. some of this and and Mm. come back in a better way where it helps the human race and at least God could smile toward it? Uh, It would be one. The second God that I think has fallen is the God of sports. Now, I know in South Africa and in Europe, uh, you guys have uh, very much rugby. into sports too. Yeah. Rugby and your, uh, you call so- we call it soccer, but football. football. Uh, I didn't get into football until I lived in London. I like it. But in America, our sports world has fallen down. $160 billion they've lost so far. All the, the, the big auditoriums, the big uh, coliseums are empty. The lights are off. And so they begin to say things in my country like, oh, we, we are America's new religion. Sports is America's new religion. 
Well, I like sports, but it's not my new religion. And so they don't no, no longer honor a Sunday. Now they take up equal Sunday morning, so the kids have to be a part of all this. And it's fallen to the ground. Maybe when it gets up, they could come back and respect God, where God in sports could be a friend and not be an enemy. But right now, it's fallen to the ground. And the next big thing in this country, I would say that's fallen to the ground, is our educational system. In America, some of the educators are very upset that now parents have more influence over the children than the school systems, which I'm like, when did we ever think that education was to be the main influence or educators over our children? The children we make that we bring in the world is our responsibility. Schools are a supplement, but not the main influence. And so that's fallen to the ground and made the parents wake up and realize these kids are your influence and you train them and teach them in the way they should go naturally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Yeah. Our teachers here in America are trying to tell little kids, well, you don't have to be a little boy. You could be a little girl. And all of a sudden, you're confusing the child. Yeah. Educators yeah. need to get right, and parents need to become in charge of their children again. And I'm praying in America when that uh, educational mountain rises back up, they'll be a little bit different, or the parents take them out of the public system homeschool them or put them in a better educational environment. And the other God that I thought that has fallen would be our money God. Uh, America mm. has always been a very wealthy nation. Uh, our poor people are richer than most poor people in the world, if I can say that respectfully. Mm. But all of a sudden in America, close to 30 million Americans don't have a job. job yeah. Now that is, that's a big deal in our country. And so for the first time, people's jobs and their money is not their security. Mm. God's not against you having money. He told people, don't trust in your money. Do good works with it. Trust in the living God. So I'm a God that believes you should prosper and do well, but you trust in God and do good works with your money and take care of your family. So I think the first thing that's happened, this is probably a long answer for your question, but mm. is these gods have fallen down and they're shaking I think they'll rise again, but hopefully in a better spirit. Mm. Now, they talk in my country, and probably around the world, about a new reset. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a reset. Mm -hmm. Well, what that means to me when I hear some of these news people and secular people talk about a reset is all the weirdness is going to become normal. And I mm -hmm. say no. The first reset, God sent us all home to face ourselves. Right. For the first time in probably hundreds of years, God sent everybody home. Not for a week, three days. We're now going into two or three months where people, when you're by yourself, you face yourself. So for the first time, the confusion, the rat race, all the stuff has stopped. And you have to face your own conscience, your own heart, your own behavior. And I think we'll find our strengths and our weakness, and we will be able to face a reality we've not faced. That's the first reset. Second reset is... Who did you marry? Now you're actually with them 24-7 for two or three months. Yeah. And you're either going to rediscover why you married each other. You're going to get to talk like you've never talked before. You're going to get to have a relationship that I think that's why you got married. But because of life and all the drama, it's been pulled or strained. And God said, go home. Mm -hmm. And he put the two back together. Mm -hmm. And then the third reset I would say is, you all made babies. These little mm -hmm. children. They don't look like the educator. They don't look like the prime minister or the president. They look like you. Mm -hmm. And so that is, I think, you're going to rediscover the beauty of having children, and you're going to discover where they're at. How about talking? How about teaching the little girls to cook? You're all stuck inside. How about teaching the guys to cook? They're stuck inside. What about teaching some folks how to change a tire? You know, in my neighborhood, I walked out one day, and all of our, our everybody's home. And we, we keep social distancing. So we talk from yard to yard, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching people out with their son, tell them how to fix the tire, change mm -hmm. the oil. The dollars are out there too. And all of a sudden we're learning and we're teaching our children how to do life. Mm -hmm. And it's no longer by, by doing a Google or Siri question, mom and dad. Are so I think that's a reset. Another reset I think is coming is a reset on the value of our community and our local churches. I think we're going to be, we're not be able to go to church. Mm -hmm. We're going to have that again. And I think we're going to have the value of where we live. And then the last one I'll suggest here 
is would be a governmental reset. How we view who we put into power, mm-hmm. and at least in the American culture, I hope we wake up and see how our, our mayor is doing, how our governor, how our president, all those. Mm-hmm. And if we don't like them, vote them out. Mm-hmm. If we do like them, vote them back in. And may some people get involved in politics, and maybe that'll be a reset where they can say, I can be on the school board. I can do things locally they've not done before and rediscover their salt and light calling in society. Now, that's a long answer for a short question, but I hope that's okay. (laughs) That's an awesome answer. I love it. I love what you just said. Powerful stuff. You know, while you were talking, I was just thinking, uh, what if one of the recess is that churches for such a long time have never evangelized the lost? Now, Mm. pastors are being forced to go online to take the message to the ends of the earth. Mm. They force to grow their churches. There's yeah. no more that, that, that comfort zone. And maybe this is one of the ways that the gospel is going to get to the ends of the earth. Because the bottom line is most of the world is connected. I mean, in Africa, yeah. in, just in Johannesburg, they found out that in a, uh, every person within a one meter radius has a cell phone. Mm. Amen. It's so dense. Mm. Everyone really? has a cell phone. Everyone's connected. So maybe this wow. is one of the recess. Amen. Just you know. Well, you I speak- think the new church, the new church yeah. norm, there'll always be there'll be the pastor, the worship leader, the children's pastor, and now we'll always have the media pastor will be a part of how we <laughs> plan churches. You know, this is here to stay, folks. For me, we dove into it. We were playing with it. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, I thought, well, this is live. So I do at least two things a day on my Facebook page, and we're having a fun time. It's growing. And yeah. what we're doing today with you, I'm doing two or three times a day. So I'm busy sitting in front of a little little, little dot on my computer. That's how I live most of my day now. So. <laughs> wow, what an exciting life you have. <laughs> yes, it's right here. So it's fun. I, I can get up and go to my bedroom. I don't have to get on an airplane. So it's fun like that. But it's like, hello, I'm talking to the world on that little dot on my computer. Amen. So. Amen. It's a strange, strange world. Amen. Mm. Tell me, you were talking about your, your um, uh, Bible schools. And I just yes. wanted to ask this question before I forget. Uh, someone that's watching here from Africa. Can they join your Bible school online? Is that is that facility We're developing available? that right now. We're uh-huh. developing the Bible school online right now. Mm-hmm. It, it, the, here's the struggle I've had with, with present-day Bible school training. Mm-hmm. is If we don't have person-to-person contact, mm-hmm. there's certain things that you cannot do efficiently, I think. You can't, you can't, do, online. You, you can't do the discernment. You can't walk with a person. You can't interact like mm-hmm. an everyday thing, mm-hmm. which as a Bible college president, you want to be able to interact, not to find fault, but you're supposed to be helping them, not mm. just to learn here, but to grow. So you mm. need that personal contact. But yet now, like this, all over the world, travel, uh, the visas and stuff, it, it's, it's a nightmare. For people, mm. especially come to America. So we're trying to put the two together and find out how to do it. And um, I didn't want to do Bible school again because I've done it for years. I thought, I'll just help all everybody else's Bible school. <laughs> but then the Lord said, you go back and build me a school and train spirit-filled ministers to go mm. help the church or build new churches. So I'm like, okay, here we go. I don't know where we're going, but here we go. So it is coming. So just stay in contact and you'll find out about it. Amen. Wow. Amen. That's and uh, w- while we got you on, Dave's going to put up your website de- details and all the other stuff on the screen. Oh, it's already on the screen. It's on the screen. Amen. So, guys, if you want to find out more about uh, what's happening, uh, uh, the new developments, uh, go to the website and uh, maybe even send them a message. And when the new Bible school comes on online, they'll contact you. Amen. But I just love this man's ministry. Tell me, you've studied all the great generals of God. And to just to tell you, uh, A. E. Allen is my favorite, right? And uh, my ministry uh, has a lot of impact from his ministry. And I know that along the way, you know, he wasn't abs- absolutely perfect, but that's why we have grace. Now, tell me, uh, what was the common trait in all these generals of God that we can learn from? I know it's, it's, it's a massive topic, mm-hmm. but what do you think is maybe two or three of the main things that we can uh, learn from? Sound, David? Uh, 
I think just check there, Pastor. I think you mistakenly muted Can you hear yourself. me now? Yeah, now we got yeah, you. Yeah. Now we got you. Go for right. it. I'm trying not to touch nothing. I'm just trying to talk. <laughs> <laughs> So, You'll be spending too much of I've time learned. with the red dot. <laughs> yes, the red dot and all that. So, yeah. But uh, the first comment would be, everybody great has done something stupid, all right, or yeah. made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. So let's first get everybody off this perfect pedestal. Yeah. Even my most favorite of all the generals is Catherine Kuhlman because I met her as a little boy. Yeah. She had a mistake in her life. So yeah. King David died the greatest king of Israel. But in one chapter, he becomes an adulterer, liar, and a murderer, and still dies a great king. Amen. So there's hope for everybody. So as we talk today, always remember, whatever you've done has not disqualified Amen. you Amen. if you'll get up and continue to obey God and not repeat what you've done that was wrong or what, you've, or what you should not have done. So I would say the common things, I would say, one, everybody that I study put word and spirit together. Uh, we have some people that are word only, some people that are spirit only, but the great people combine them together uh -huh. to give a, a, a slogan uh, that I've coined. And I actually hijacked it from Gordon Lindsay, so I've got to be honest. I heard it from his writings. If you have the word only, you dry up. If you mm -hmm. have the spirit only, you blow up. If you put the two together, you will grow up. Wow. And so wow. the great generals wow. had the value of word and spirit together. And uh -huh. so those who don't put those together equally do not make it long term. They have a, what I, my grandmother called a rocket ministry. Over here, we have fireworks at the July 4th, mm -hmm. and they zoom up in the sky and go, Pow! everybody goes, wow. And while you're wowing, they're fading. Mm. And that is what a lot of people are in ministry. They're rocket preachers. They go, wow, with their mm. anointing gift. And while we're going, this is amazing. They're dying out because they've not combined word and spirit. Um, a lot of the great generals also learn how to stay in their calling. Just because you can do many things does not mean you're called to do many things. Mm -hmm. And uh, they stay in the one or two things that God told them to do. Mm -hmm. I asked Or Roberts one time. I was very close to Or Roberts. Mm -hmm. That's why my name is Roberts, because he helped name me when I was a little boy. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just go ahead and explain that so everybody yeah. gets the, the, that out of the way. My name is Kenneth after my father, Roberts, my middle name, after Or Roberts, and my surname, Lairdin. My parents went to Or Roberts University the first year that it opened. I was born the second year, and my parents had the first baby boy. Another couple had a baby girl, and the Oral and Evelyn wanted to help name the first boy, the first girl, and that's how I got my name. And I've spent 50 years explaining that S of why I'm called Roberts and not Robert, all right? So now everybody in Africa should know, and you don't have to ask me that question again, but uh, I, I would say, I asked Oral one time, I said, Brother Roberts, why are you a great man? And, um, and he goes, well, because I do the one thing God told me, not 50 things that you can do. God told me to take healing power to my generation, and I stay in that vein, and I don't do anything else but that. He goes, that is my main message. And he, then he called me to build a university. Mm -hmm. And those are the two things I was called to do. So I think the great people stay within their actual calling mm -hmm. and anointing. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of guys uh, die never fulfilling their calling. They die doing good works for Jesus, but not mm -hmm. their high call that yeah. produces a natural and an eternal fruit that remains. Mm -hmm. And so that would be one. I That's would possible. say another thing, the Another great one, I'll give you three or four, and then we can talk some more. But uh, they, they, the, those that were great married the right person. Mm -hmm. uh, Oral e married Evelyn and was happily married. And their life was tremendous, but it wasn't easy. Kenneth Hagen married Aretha. Mm -hmm. Love Brother Summer all married Louise. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the people we grew up with, you'll see that that marriage, that partner, mm -hmm. that, 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 that person mm -hmm. is so significant in their life. Mm. Not just to help them in the private life, but also in ministry is that they're working together with believing. Sometimes nobody else believes but that husband or that wife. Mm. And thank God you don't have an unbelieving person. And that would, mm. that would be there. And the fourth one, they all believed in fighting the devil. Mm. They believed in addressing him and rebuking him. He was a real opponent. He was literal. And he had to be fought daily. Mm. Uh, my grandmother was a classical Pentecostal. And she said, just punch the devil. Even if he's not fighting you, he's there. Hit him anyway. And so <laughs> there's, a whole, there's a whole view about fighting the devil. Ignoring the devil is not a biblical warfare tactic. 
-hmm. That's an emotional religious tactic. Nowhere mm -hmm. did Jesus Come on. or Paul ignore mm -hmm. the devil. He addressed it. And yeah. so if you don't address the enemy, they have power to influence you and your family in some ways. Mm -hmm. So those would be at least four things I would give to you now. Wow, that's powerful. That is very powerful. Now, I just want to say to you, you, you guys that are watching us at the moment on this live feed, on this broadcast, you need to get the whole... Uh, how many, is it four volumes? Is it four? How many volumes are there in six God's Six books. Six, six books. Six books, right? Yeah, six. There are six There'll be books. 12 when I'm done. There'll be 12. Oh, there's still more to come? Amen. I'm, I'm yeah. writing six more. Uh, amen. Amen. So there's going to be... Uh, there's six books on God's generals. Uh, what Pastor Roberts just shared is just a tiny part of it. You need to read God's generals. There's a few more books. We're going to ask him in the end about the rest of the books and uh, some of the new books he's got. But this is one of the most powerful books if you believe God has called you into ministry. Amen. And the one point that, you know, all the points were so powerful, but the one point that was really, really hit home to me was who you marry. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. so often people don't wait upon God. They don't wait to, for a confirmation from God. They're not praying for their partner. They see somebody, they love that person, you know, their, their emotions run wild, and they marry the wrong person. And I've, and I've counseled so many pastors who got used, and they, and they are struggling. They are struggling mm -hmm. because they married the wrong person. You know, if you yeah. have a call, a strong call on, of God on your life, God has got the perfect spouse for you. Wait upon God. Maybe write down 10 points about the person you want to marry. Take it before God, sow a seed, wait upon God, and God will bring that person. You know, Pastor, when, when this woman, she actually prayed for me, right? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. When she came into my life, God told me audibly, this is the woman I want you to marry. And a week later, now I didn't tell her, a week later, God spoke to her audibly and said to her, this is the man I want you to marry. But she obviously put a whole lot of fleeces before God. God answered all the fleeces. You know, I had more faith. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> I had to be sure. Yeah, sure. But I thank God. You know, we, uh, we are now married 20... Seven and 20, a half years. 20, I was almost going to say 28. But 27 and a half <laughs> years. And we <laughs> would never have been. Yeah. <laughs> we would never have come to where we are today if I hadn't married the right woman. And, and we complement each other. We work together. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, as a family, we, there's four of us. Yeah. There's Pastor Dave, my son, Catherine. Now, we're in a studio. We've got uh, 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 four studio cameras here. But I've got Catherine, who's on one of the, the cameras. David is my uh, TV guy. <laughs> He's my production guy. You know, So we all four work together as a family. But mm -hmm. it's because we wait upon God. Mm -hmm. I almost made the mistake. I almost married the wrong person. But God mm. cut in at the right time and said, that's the one. And it's so important, mm. you know. And the other, yeah. the other things you spoke about, it's powerful stuff. Guys, yeah. this, uh, this interview will be on social media. It'll be on Facebook. We'll put it on YouTube. Go back, listen to it over and over and over again. Now, I want to come to a very, very important question. A very important question. Because, Pastor, you have been to heaven, right? I've, I've watched your testimony, and I was so blessed by it. And, you know, I've, I've heard many people share uh, about their experiences, you know, who have gone to heaven, many great, wonderful men of God. And there's so much of synergy in what you said, what they said. You know, they've, they've all spoken about, many of them have spoken about the, uh, the, the, the flowers in heaven, the grass, They've spoken about the storehouse with body parts. We're going to ask you about that. And um, uh, though I have a very important question, a very, very important question. I have a dog, right? My dog is a Maltese poodle. Her name is Snowy, right? When we get to heaven and Snowy gets to heaven, will Snowy talk to me? It's a very important question. <laughs> I don't know if she'll talk to you, but maybe you could have some kind of communication. <laughs> I do know when I was in heaven, we walked past a group of trees with birds in it. Right. And the birds were singing right. in bird language. I'll say it that way. But right. we could understand what they were saying. 
Right. So when you ask that question, my answer is probably yes, but I don't know how to explain this stuff. There's a lot of things about my heaven experience that I don't tell, not because yeah. I don't want to. I don't know how to, because the more yeah. I try to explain it, the weirder it gets. Yeah. I don't want it to get weird, but in heaven, there is a communication right. avenue or connection mm -hmm. between like when we walk past the birds in the trees were singing mm -hmm. and we understood what they were saying. Mm -hmm. And so, but they didn't speak English or Spanish. They were singing in bird talk, I guess you'd say. And that's, yeah, yeah. so that's why I say most likely yes, but I don't know how to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a good chance. So Jesse, we have to take very good care of Snowy, we have right? To. Because she's gonna complain when we get to heaven. I'm very the dog lover. Pastor. Okay, tell I like ducks. Part. I was a little duck when I was a boy. We had I had a duck and we had a dog. So right. my ducks, I had Sam and Susie. So I hope Sam and Susie's in heaven in my <laughs> pond in the backyard. So. You didn't eat any of them by any chance. No, we we didn't eat duck. I do now, but I don't. Then. Oh, thank but, God! Uh, but we had. We, I got little Sam when he was a little duckling, and yeah, so he yeah. grew up and lived long, most of my little boyhood into my young teen years. And so that was my that was my pet was a duck, and I like ducks to this day. I could watch them, enjoy them. We put a little swimming pool in the backyard, and he would get in the pool and swim. And yeah. so that's called a that's called a city duck. A farm yeah. duck has a pond. A city duck has a pool. So right. that's the way it works. Well, it's going to get pretty difficult for the pork eaters because, you know, uh, well, uh, you're going to yeah. meet your pet pig there. They're going to say, hey, you ate my family. You know, you had <laughs> bacon every day. You ate my family. Uh, and how are you going to answer Funny. the pigs again? Anyway, right. <laughs> let's get to some serious stuff now. <laughs> so what I want you to do is maybe just share with us a little bit about heaven. I know you, you spoke about you had uh, uh, um, an experience where you... Um, uh, I love the one about the couch. You have to share about the couch, right? Was, that was that was for me. Wow, wow! I'd never heard that before, and that was very powerful. And you also spoke about the um, river of life in heaven, mm -hmm. right? Have I got it right? River of life. So, yep, but, but share life. with us as God will lead you about mm -hmm. heaven, because um, I, I know there's many people watching us right now, and uh, maybe you have. Uh, a heart failure, maybe you have kidney failure, uh, but you need certain body parts. And I want you to listen to what's in heaven and what's available to you. Amen? What's available to you. But, but first start, first, tell us about the story about heaven, because I want everything about heaven, right? You can take two hours. <laughs> okay. Two hours, Just right? on this, <laughs> we take two hours. Well, my story of heaven is, um, you made a comment earlier that, Everybody talks about the same kind of things or synergy yeah. because it's the same place. We're yeah. not going to two different heavens. It's yeah. the same heaven. It's like if I come to South Africa and I come to Joburg and I only see one part of Joburg. So I can only talk about being in Johannesburg at this part on the east side versus the guy that's on the west side. That's yeah. the way heaven is. People go there. Uh -huh. It is scriptural. It's in the Old Testament and New Testament that people can see into heaven mm -hmm. and actually people go there and come back. So we have a biblical precedent, and throughout church history, we have stories that God sovereignly, for whatever reason, took this woman, this man, this boy, this grandpa, and showed them heaven and returned them to the earth to speak about it. So I jokingly say most people get a one-way ticket. They go there and stay. There's a few like me, they got a round-trip ticket. We got to mm -hmm. come back. Mm -hmm. And if I ever get to go back, I'm not coming back. So don't try to raise me, just let me go. Because <laughs> uh, I, I, I do miss it sometimes. <laughs> but I went as an eight-year-old boy. I didn't go as a theologian. Mm -hmm. uh, so as I tell my story, man, I need you to understand, I didn't go as a theologian or who I am today. I'm a little boy, eight years old, that was raised in a Christian family. I had a knowledge of God, but I was a little boy. And it was, I'd finished playing a, ga uh, a game of baseball with my friends outside on the street mm -hmm. where we lived in Oklahoma, Broken Arrow, where you guys visited. Mm -hmm. And uh, so God came and just pulled me out of my body. I went into my house and sat down and this pull came and I went through the roof of my house where I could look down on the street and see my friends riding their bikes back to their houses and I could see cars and, and land begin to grow in my eyesight. And then I flew outside of what I would call the earth atmosphere and landed mm. outside one of the biggest gates I ever saw in my life. And my little mind said, I must be having a, you know, a vision or you know, a dream or this is not real. When I reached out and touched the gate, which was one of the pearly gates, when I made that conduct, I knew it was real. 
And then I took a step back and then I heard these words, this is one of the gates. And I turned that way and there stood Jesus about five, six feet mm -hmm. or so from me. Mm -hmm. And the glory or the light that was upon him as he got closer, it began to engulf me and you could feel it working on you without him saying anything. And he goes, I want to give you a tour of heaven there because I love you. And the gate opened and we walked inside of heaven. And the first thing I remember inside of the gate was the golden street with the golden curb with the flowers next to it that hummed. Now, as soon as I say that, most people get what I call the Walt Disney idea of singing flowers. So mm -hmm. let me correct that for one. Mm -hmm. Every few minutes, the best way I know how to explain it, there comes a wave of God's life, energy, anointing, whatever word you want to use. And when it comes through the flowers, it comes through and it makes a humming sound. Mm -hmm. So that's why the flowers sounded to me like they were humming. Because that life would come through, and that humming sound would come through the flowers. And I remember thinking, I'm walking on golden streets. Now, the golden streets look golden, but at some parts, at some place, they look transparent. Yes. Now, there are people that say stuff like that. So I just tell you what I saw. Just if you to, don't believe just, me, just I don't to tell care. You the, yes. the purest form of gold is actually transparent. Yeah. Well, then that explains why it's that way there. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember walking on it, and there are times it looked like it was transparent. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I remember looking at it, and there came a lady walking down the street where I was walking with the Lord, and she walked up to me, and she had under her arm a little substitute, like a little bundle she was carrying. She had a book and some type of package. Mm -hmm. And she walked up and knew that it was Jesus, and she knew my name with the S. She was Roberts, and that's a very rare thing for people to call me correctly. Mm -hmm. And so it caught my attention as a little boy. And she didn't speak to me directly after that, just to the Lord. And then we walked down the street and we walked into one of the houses. Now, the King James called them mansions. Mm -hmm. Now, not all houses are the same size mm -hmm. or the same way. I lived in California for 20 years and pastored in Southern California. We have what we call track housing. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I mean by track mm -hmm. housing? Yeah, yeah. Same kind of housing. Yeah. This goes from, yeah, we, you know, it's boring but it's mm -hmm. track housing. Heaven is not track housing or the same architectural design. And so we walked up to this house and we knocked on the door. People said, why'd you knock on the door? Because it's still manners work in heaven. You don't mm -hmm. float through people's walls and they say hi and <laughs> go out the other side. There's still protocols in heaven. And we actually knocked twice before the man that lived there opened the door and he came. we came in. Mm -hmm. We walked into the house. In this house, it was furnished in this particular house like a lot of what we would call our modern Western kind of furniture. And mm -hmm. it had pictures and things and even pictures of the man's family. Now, I don't know how to explain that, but there was pictures of what was known to me to be his family on earth. And so there's still, you know, the Bible says that we're one family in two locations, in heaven and in earth. Mm -hmm. So there is an interaction yeah. uh, to what degree. I know the spiritual side more than I know the natural. When I start talking like this, well, there was a picture of the guy's family in his house. Then I get 5,000 emails say, well, can you explain that? No, I can't. I just can tell you what I saw. You, you, you can believe me or I'll throw it out. It's okay. The only way you'll know that I'm telling the truth, if you get saved and go to heaven for yourself. That's my answer to that question. Now, the, the part that you want me to talk about, when we sit down in the yes. furniture in heaven, right. the, the, the sofa or the couch, the little seat that I was in was a lie. Now, people go, ooh, it was alive. It was alive with comfort. When you sat down, comfort reached up and cuddled you while you were sitting there, and you never had to move. Now, I've watched you, and you've watched me. We're yeah. going to move all through this yeah. interview. <laughs> what we're doing, we're finding comfortable spots. Right. Yeah. If we were in heaven, what you're sitting in, what I'm in, would never make us move. It'd just be comfort because comfort would cuddle and comfort you while you would sit in it. So that's why, to me, as a little boy, the sofa was alive. And so it was alive with comfort like that. And believe me, with furnitures and airplane seats, I want that kind of thing on earth to be so much easier to travel with. Um, so that was the house. We um, went out the back door of the man's home. I'm, I'll, I'll run through the story a little faster. Uh, the back door of the man's home. And when I noticed at that time the vegetation of heaven. You'll notice everyone that's ever saw heaven or went to heaven, they talk about 
the trees, the flowers, the grass. You think if you go to heaven, I don't go to Africa and talk about grass. I go back and talk about giraffes or elephants or something bigger, you know. But in heaven, the grass is the green green of the color of green. It's a more vibrant green than we've ever seen on earth. And then you walk on earth, you know how you put your footprint in the grass sometimes. Well, in heaven, you can put a footprint and you can watch the blades of grass pop back faster than they do on earth. And as a boy, I kept playing with the grass. Mm. I like the grass jumping back up if you press on it and step on it. It'll move <laughs> back up quite fast. Amen. And wow. so that's a little boy's world. And uh, then uh, I'll talk about seeing angels in heaven. Right. Now, angels to me, as a little boy, stand about six feet to eight feet tall. That's kind of the height of them as I would be able to describe their height. Mm -hmm. Some have wings and some don't. But they're dressed, you know, in a certain kind of robe, but they have different color, like different color things on their clothes. I'll say it that way. Mm -hmm. Now, the wings of the angel, everybody talks about these feathers falling. All right. So let me just kind of blow some minds for a minute. Now, these little feathers that fall are like this. I'm, I've got friends that have had that experience, that supernatural happening. But angel's feathers are about that long. They're, they're long, right. big feathers. So yeah. when I was a little boy standing next to the angel that was talking to us, I kept playing with the, the feathers and trying to pull them out and do all that. That's what little boys do. So yeah. when, when I get to these, these meetings today, and I don't want to be Mr. Negative, but I'm like, I don't know if this really is an angel feather because they're, they're, they're about this big, folks. Now, yeah. if that fell in a room, I'd go, angel feather for sure. So I'm not trying to be rude to people. I'm like, that's my experience. They're about right. this big. Okay, everybody? Right. These other little things are maybe they're dove feathers. I don't know. Yeah. I'm used to the big. So that, that the angels uh, all have a certain degree of uh, respect mm -hmm. to Jesus, mm -hmm. and they have a relationship to other people, like folks who live there now. Mm -hmm. And there is a differentiation between all of them. Even mm -hmm. they all get along, but the angels have a certain place, mm -hmm. and the people do, and then the Lord. And, and you can see them interact mm -hmm. with respect to those kind of awarenesses. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you're able and that, to distinguish between people and angels quite easily in heaven? Yeah, height. The height. The, For a little height. boy, it was height. Right. For me, the people that were a little shorter were what we would call saints or Christians that have gone yeah. on, and right. angels are taller. That, that's the way I would do it. Even today, you know, that's right. what I still And the question describe. everyone has, how do we look like in heaven? In their 30s. The 30s. So everyone is in the Everybody looks age. like they're in the third. Yeah, to me, if you ask, what does everybody look like? They look like somebody early 30s would be their 30s, that age, mm -hmm. that, that, that mm -hmm. kind of look. And there's no fat people. So everybody's mm -hmm. got the right kind of size. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord for that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's no, you know, those people ask those questions all the time. Are people overweight? I didn't see any overweight people. Everybody was no. look like they're in their 30s and healthy. I'll say it that way. Right. And the clothing they were wearing, what clothing were they, are they wearing? Well, the ones that I saw had a white robe that the Bible taught, but it came from them, not hung on them. Now, I do not know how to explain that anymore. Right. Like you can see, I'm wearing my clothes. It's right. hanging on me. Right. So, But for some reason, to me, what they were wearing kind of came from them. It, it, wow. it, it was... That's all I can say. Now, they have different, what we would call brooches or sashes or belts. So they had uniqueness in their own personal look, but they all had that white type of dress, shirt, what do you want to call it? Mm -hmm. And that's the way it looked to me. And it, wow. and it felt like normal clothes. It didn't feel hot or cold. It just felt like clothes, but you were unaware of it. Like, I'm aware of my shirt. Mm -hmm. I was not aware of that white robe, even though you could see it. It was, it was right. May I say it was real comfortable enough where you didn't know you had it on. I'll say it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, tell me, you spoke about the houses, right? The walls yeah. of the houses. Could you see through the walls? Whoops. No. Nope. Can you see through the walls? To me, the homes and the walls of the houses were just like we have here on earth. Um, I didn't see through it. We didn't walk through it. I saw mm -hmm. nobody flying in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, people ask that question, where are people flying? Right. No, you got golden streets. Walk on them. Right. And uh, so, you know. Uh, that's my experience, so right. I can only tell right. you what I know. So um, that's how okay. I would explain and that. And you said the houses were all different, right? Because it was yeah, that some were bigger. Yeah? yeah, some were bigger, some were smaller. They were decorated differently. Now, I didn't see all of heaven. I just saw part of it. Right. And uh, so I assume 
that their neighborhood, that's the way this, I, I'm assuming right. yeah. that there's stuff like that there. And yeah. uh, I saw bits of it, uh, so I didn't see everything. That's all right. Okay, great. Now, before we move on to the, the rest of the stuff that you experienced there, now I'm going to ask you a question because I know you don't always want to talk about this, but tell us about the unique animals in heaven. <laughs> The unique animals. Well, <laughs> you're asking a question that in the beginning, when I first started telling this story, this experience, right. I would try to explain the other creatures mm -hmm. that are in heaven that we don't have on earth. Mm -hmm. I think Ezekiel tried too. Right. And we got all these creatures with eyes and things. Mm. Well, it's not scary creatures, but they're just different. Mm -hmm. And I quit trying to explain them because the more I tried, the weirder everybody got in their imagination. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is distracting from the overall story. So that is my answer to your question. So I, if, if I knew how I would, how do you explain right. the color blue when you've never yeah. seen blue? Right. How would you explain right. certain things that you, right. that, well, blue is, you can't, and there are animals or creatures mm -hmm. that are uh, unique to heaven, mm -hmm. even though in heaven there are animals that we have on earth that are there mm -hmm. too. Uh, but there are, there are creatures that are unique to heaven that, we don't have here on earth. And I don't know how to explain them, but I do. Well, the Bible it does speak weird. about, uh, it does speak about mystical creatures like the unicorn and so on, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So it's just, uh, well, it's amazing. It's something, because it's, it's something to look forward to. Amen. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, were there any cars that you saw? <laughs> I saw no cars. I saw no airplanes. Yeah. I saw no uh, rowboats. I didn't see that. You know, some people, some people say they see that. And I'm thinking, did you really go to heaven? Because I don't know if those things are needful in heaven. Do you need a car? Right. When you actually can move right. a little bit faster. Uh, uh -huh. Most people, when I was there, walked. Mm -hmm. That's my. They, they walk from one place to the other. I saw nobody flying in the air. Others mm -hmm. people. I'm sure so I, I did not. Mm -hmm. What I saw was a very much like earth, but in perfection. And the greatest thing about heaven to me is not what I saw. It's what I felt to right. be in an atmosphere where there's no resistance to you, no negative to be an atmosphere where by the time you and I got up and explain it this way, by the time you and I and the people watching us woke up this morning and got from bed to shower to coffee, mm -hmm. How many negative thoughts had you had to overcome? Mm. How many of uh, oppressive type of things had you had to push through mm. in heaven that does not exist? To be in an atmosphere where there is no demonic or there is no negative coming at you mm -hmm. is one of the greatest things about heaven where you have acceptance and there's a love and there is a, a lift to you and there's never a put down or a slap or a, a fault finding mm. even in your own thinking. And mm. so that, to me, I miss the most. That's the glory of, of the, what I said. the atmosphere of the glory. Mm. The atmosphere of the glory. Yeah. Tell me, how yeah. did people communicate in heaven? Are they just like the way we are talking now, or was for me knowing? the way we're talking? The way we're talking. There, there, there could be others that have gone to heaven talked about that, but I did not experience that. Right. My experience was what you and I are doing. Yeah. That's what we did. We talked and communicated. Right. The thing that was funny to me about that, everybody knew my name. And they knew I was visiting. And right. they talked to me and they got the S right. And they would say, we hope you enjoy your visit. And they spoke like they knew the facts about everything related to me. Right. So that gave me a little bit of insight that there is an all-knowing kind of thing or mm. something like that among, among the right. citizens of heaven. Right. So how to explain that beyond that? I don't know, but that's right. what I saw or experienced. Okay. Uh, what about the, it was, was it daylight there? Uh, well, obviously it was daylight. It was, it was, was like it, sun? it was like eleven, twelve, one o'clock time on Earth. Right. You know when the sun yeah. is kind of bright, but there was no sun. It's just bright. Okay. It's just bright, and uh, you know, so I didn't see any like we have the sun and the moon. We didn't, I didn't see any you know celestial bodies in this what we call the sky of heaven. It was a bright, uh, comfortable brightness. It wasn't like an overpowering, but it was it was a comfortable brightness. And tell us about the worship in heaven, right? Because we've heard well, that, I, uh, can you, can you, can you, you know, pe we've heard that no, people no. worship 24 hours a day. They don't do anything else. So. Well, that's not true. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you do other stuff too. Right. Heaven has many access to, uh, right. aspects to it. Well, at least I'll say again, so this is where I, people say things like that. And I'm like, well, 
I was in a praise service, and I'm nicknamed it, nicknamed it the praise service. Right. And we praised and worshiped God for for a while. Mm -hmm. And there was about five, six hundred, you know, people or so. And the angels also were there. And as a little boy, as we begin to sing songs that we sang on earth, and some mm -hmm. songs are only sung in heaven, mm -hmm. um, as we begin to sing, we created this substance that we call praise and worship. So mm -hmm. when you worship God with sincerity, I believe in you're worshiping God, not just doing the religious singing the song, but you're worshiping God. You, your spirit creates this substance called praise and worship that goes to the throne of God and blesses him or decorates it or something. And you can watch the, the, the praise because it had little sparkles in it. As a little kid, I tried to catch the sparkles. As they would come out, I would try to catch the little sparkles in, in the praise and the worship. And that's how I remember it. And they sing songs on earth that we sing. And then they were singing songs that I did not know. They were not earth songs or songs that had not gotten to earth yet. I'll say it that way. Mm -hmm. So as you were worshiping, these, these sparkles were coming out of your mouth. And, uh, yeah, all of, all of them. Everybody. All of them. Everybody was there. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then explain to us the worship. Uh, how is worship in heaven? Now, I understand you said there was, you know, there's no limitation. But how is it different from, let's say, someone worshiping in church? on a Sunday morning? Well, nobody in the crowd doesn't want to be there. Sometimes in church, people are there because that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And they're bored with the song mm -hmm. or they're bored. They don't like the worship leader. They don't like the mm -hmm. piano player. So they don't want to, all these attitudes, that doesn't exist. Right. So when you come into like the praise, everybody's there because they want to. There are no attitudes. There's no dispositional problems. And they all just worship God unashamedly right. in front of everybody with full-hearted worship, full-hearted full mouth, heart, soul, body, and the sh they go at it. And so, Amen. you know, it's, and nobody's watching each other, even though you're seeing people, but you're not like uh -huh. watching. Everybody's participating. And that's, that's how I would explain it. Wow. Uh, and that's the music? And the, the, mus the music? You, know, yeah. you have all kinds of musical, there are musical instruments on earth and heaven that are the same. And then there are sounds that are created by other means that I don't know that we don't have yet, or I hate to use the word synthesizer sounds or other keyboard sounding things that yeah. maybe there's another instrument I don't know about that was there or it was uniqueness of the atmosphere. I, I don't know, but there are sounds you can hear and there are sounds that I do not know right. what they were or where they came from. Right. And the angels themselves, they were making sounds from the wings. Is that right? Yeah. When I was standing with the angels and so when the wings move, when the air goes through their wings, it makes like musical sounds. It sounds like from instruments. So I remember that the angels wings. So sometimes we've heard the, the old timers will call them right. who are saying, we heard the angel choir sing with us in right. 1952 or some, you know, those right. kind of stories. And they, we heard the harps of heaven. Well, right. maybe, or it could have been just the wings of the angels moving right. as they were singing or being there. Right. And they heard that sound. Yeah. So I don't, know how to, to judge it. I just say it's a possibility that it right. could have been an instrument or just their wings too. Wow. That's awesome. Any, any other question you have before we go to the next part? Sure. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so <laughs> pleased. Did you ask Jesus well, anything as an eight-year-old? Yeah, but here's, I mean, here's what he looks like. Uh, yeah. I talk more about what he looks like than what he said. Because some things he says is for you. And yeah. not for everybody else yeah. kind of for thing. So ministry, everybody boy. wants to know, yeah, and stuff like like that. He stands about five foot eleven, six foot one tall would be the height of him. Uh -huh. His hair comes down about here. He does have a beard, mm -hmm. and he has muscles. Now mm -hmm. that people go, why do you? Did you see? I said, you see the scars in his hands? I didn't look, but I re, I'm not trying to be. But I'm an eight year old boy, so mm -hmm. muscles mean something. Mm -hmm. So I remember looking at Jesus, and he. When he laughs, we, as we say in the state, it was more like a hearty or a, a belly laugh, does that make sense? A strong mm -hmm. laughter. Mm -hmm. he, did, he, he, he didn't do that. It was more from down deep, a very strong, hearty laugh. Mm -hmm. He has muscles. And when he looks at you, you you're not afraid. You're not scared. And, and mm -hmm. you feel the invitation of his person to you, his welcoming to you. Like, wow. you are welcomed here. When he looks at you, you can feel totally accepted. And uh, he laughs. He talks. And he has muscles. That's how I remember it. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> One last question. Uh, do people speak in tongues? Uh, like you said, some of them 
Oh. You know, you were I didn't person. hear, I, I did not hear any of that. Uh, they may, but I, I did not experience or know that. Mm. When I was there, they spoke, spoke English, English, or at least I heard them in English. I'll say it that way. Yeah. That's the way that it okay. was for me. So I'll say it that way. Right. Yeah. So you got into this gathering where they were worshiping God. The angels were there and Jesus was there as well. Tell us what happened mm. next. Well, we, we left the, 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 the worship or the praise service, mm. as I called it. And we went to the storehouses right. of heaven. Now, this is the one part that I never wanted to talk about because it's so odd. And so I'll let everybody know, if you don't want to believe this, that's okay. Just throw it out if you want to. But mm. since my host asked me, I will talk about it. By the way, just, what just we to call tell the... you, I've heard um, at least four other people who've been to heaven also share on this. Amen. So it's... Uh, well, I know they it's are true. there. They are there. So they are <laughs> yeah. here. So what, what happened to me was about, I guess there was two, three, what I would call storehouses or big kind of buildings that had mm -hmm. stuff stored in it mm -hmm. is the way I would explain it. Mm -hmm. And we walked into one and this one storehouse had body parts. Right. And they had little, eye, little packages of eyes and there was hearts and lungs and there's all kinds of body parts in this big storehouse. Mm -hmm. Now, as soon as you say, oh, that's gross. For some reason, it was not a morbid or gross. It was like, oh, because all this was in there. And the Lord said to me, these are the unclaimed blessings. They belong to people on the earth. Mm. And he went on to say, and he went to say, and there's no lock on the door, which meant it's always open to come and get what you need. Mm. Now, remember, the Lord is talking to me as an eight-year-old, not a theologian, not an adult man. I'm a little boy. So mm. when he goes, there's no lock on the door, that meant to me, you can come in and out when you need to. And he goes, this belongs to people on the earth. Go back and tell them their part waits for them. And so I, I, I've told the, the story, and all of it's in there. I mean, all, I saw all the body parts you can imagine. They're all in there, and, and, it, and it is what it is. And uh, so I told that story one time years ago, and I said, if you ever have a body part come floating by that you need, grab it and put it where it belongs. Mm -hmm. Well, the guy thought I was a nut. You know, that's, this kid is just, you know, he was on drugs, and he was tripping the whole thing but he had a kidney problem he wrote me this testimony and, and he had his kidneys were failing him and he had had one removed and he said one afternoon about two weeks after this i saw a kidney come floating by he's i reached out and put it where it belonged and then i thought i'm nuts the kid has affected me he goes back to the doctor and he has a brand new kidney where the one was taken out wow. now is in there wow. so god gave him what we've been called a creative kind of miracle and put a new one in there. Wow. And so, you know, God can do miracles and he can do creative miracles. Amen. Amen. And I think creative miracles become one of the great signs of the future. Yeah. How would somebody access this body part mm. that they need that's in the heaven storehouse, right? How would someone I think access? Yeah. Just very simple. Jesus, mm -hmm. I need a new part. Mm -hmm. Can I have my new part? Uh -huh. Angel, go get my new part. <laughs> just, to me, spiritual things are simple. We yeah. we complicate them so much. Yes. Catherine Kuhlman used to say, Miss Kuhlman used to say, the things are so simple that most people miss it. Mm. And she was right. Yeah. Just say, Jesus, I need a new kidney. I need a new eye. Some people just need some adjustment. Some mm. people need a new part. Mm. And just ask him for it. And then, like I said, if you see it come floating by, grab it and put it where it belongs amen and that's as simple you know as i would say to you while you're watching us right now on this live stream if you need a body part maybe now's the time to ask god say lord this is what i need i need a new kidney i need a new eyes whatever part of your body that you need ask god right now right now you know there's an anointed powerful man of god that's on the program today the presence of God is here in right now, feeling it here in the studio. Mm -hmm. And, and you've got to just reach out and grab it. Amen. And, and mm -hmm. as, we are, as we are ministering, as we are praying, you get ready for your miracle. Amen. You get ready for your miracle. Remember, miracles are normal Christianity. They're normal. Amen. And, 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 and as Pastor Robert said, all you've got to do is reach out and grab it and say, Lord, I need this now. Ask God. You know, you know, James says, you have not because you don't ask. Mm, don't but if you ask God, God will give it to you. Amen. There's an atmosphere. We're talking about heaven. 
And heaven is the atmosphere of God's glory. But do you know that that atmosphere comes down to earth to visit us? And we in the atmosphere of God's glory right now. We in the atmosphere of God's glory. So whatever it is you need, reach out and grab it right now. Grab it. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so Pastor Roberts, did you go into the storehouse? I got to ask you this question. Did you go and play with the lungs and the... <laughs> I don't know. I went, I went in the storehouse and we were inside when the Lord's talking to us. So I didn't, I didn't play with anything. I looked at it. I was taught to be a proper child when I grew up. You don't touch things. You can look at them, ask questions. So my earthly manners work in my heavenly visit. How's that? So. Amen, amen. Now you said there were two storehouses. Is that right? Or did they both have bought There's two storehouses. So right. what store did you, did you read my book last night? And you're getting all the no, questions. No, 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 no. I'm saying to you, well, why I'm telling you this is because your story, I mean, I've heard um, uh, Jesse Duplantis, several yeah. other people. You know, this is why I know what you're saying is so real. It's so real. Because, you know, you, you know, if you go, as you said, if you go to Johannesburg, you will see Johannesburg. You're not going to see Cape Town. You're not going to see New York. You're going to see Johannesburg. So the, this is why I haven't read your book yet. Well, what was the okay. second where Sora was? You've got to tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> it was where, for me, it looked like it was a room like with files in it and right. with people's names on it. Uh -huh. And so as a little boy, it had things with your name and an act, activity on. There was some type of filing system or, or a recording right. system in, the, in right. the second one. And so there was little comments about that. I didn't stay in there very long. And right. uh, of the two storehouses, the body part one is the most exciting and, yeah. and the most real to me. Yeah. When we walked out of the, the storehouses, we were close to what I call the throne room building. Right. Now, I, I don't know if that's the correct name for it, that. Mm. I named stuff as I went through the story. Okay. So when we get to heaven, it may be a whole nother name than what it is. Yeah. All right. So right. please grace me. And I'm a little boy. But I saw from the back of this building, uh, lightning being slung into existence, like it being formed as it was going. And you could hear a low rumble or a low roar, not a fearful mm. roar, but a low roar. Now, the sound of God's presence is something that maybe people don't talk about much there. Mm. They can feel the weight of this glory, but there's a, there's a sound of the presence mm. of God. When I was a little boy and I started the God's general stuff, I'll tell this story. And Catherine Kuhlman is my most favorite preacher of all. I saw more of God's power displayed in her, her service I have in anybody else's, mm -hmm. and I know them all. And they're all great, but that redheaded divorcee woman had it. Mm -hmm. And in the old timers, the old ladies that worked with her, mm -hmm. when I begin to tell the story, they'd come to the meetings and look at me kind of funny, and then they'd walk up to me after the service and ask me questions. And so they'd always ask this one question, did you hear it? And at first I thought, the music? Did you hear her? And then I realized they were asking, like my grandmother would, spiritual questions with that certain tone and look. Mm -hmm. And I said, if you meant the sound in the meeting, yes. And then they'd hug and kiss me. He really knows the move of God with Catherine. And then, now I became a Kumanite, except mm. because I knew they were talking about the sound of God's presence in Catherine mm. Kuman's meetings. Mm. To me, as a little boy in her meetings, you could hear a low roar, like what I heard in heaven. Right. Uh, just a little different, but this, I knew it was the same thing. That low roar, and it was the sound of his standing presence. There's a sound to him. And it sounded to me like a low, comfortable, strong roar. You could hear it. And you could hear that in the building. And uh, so I was told that was the throne room building. So that's why I call it that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's mm -hmm. what I remember there. So. Amen. I, amen. I've, I've, I've smelt God's presence, and, mm. and, and once or twice I've heard that. I've heard that roar. Yeah. You know, and, uh, when you uh, get to hear it, that means you're close to it. Then that mm. sound is there. Mm. That, that's more of a tangible. We yeah. talk about the glory world, and I think we're just starting to scratch the surface so of our understanding and our experience of it. Yeah. And we have to be careful that we keep close to the word so we can keep pursuing because if you try to pursue the glory with a wrong heart or a wrong understanding, you'll be mm. stopped. Mm. And uh, so you have to be very careful, I think, in that arena. Mm. Uh, so that, that sound of his presence is mm. very important. You can hear it, and it's more than a feeling. And, it, mm. and, and, it, and it's 
Well, I, I just want everybody to hear it. I don't know how to explain it. It's magnificent. Yeah. And it's not yeah. scary, but it is mighty. So. Amen. Now, you, I know you've studied great men of God, but I also know you had mighty miracles in your ministry. Maybe share some of them with us. Well, I hardly ever do that, but uh, <laughs> you're getting you're getting on all the questions and areas I I just let go on by. Some things I don't talk about because yeah. I just think God knows if people knows, and so yeah. be it. Because the reason why I, I, I run from that, and I'll answer your question in a minute, is yeah. because some people use the miracles and and inflate them so much that, right. that they're beyond the beauty of right. God's kindness. Mm. It, it's being used in a way that I think if you just give God the thanks. Hmm. Let him have the glory, and you just stand in behind. You'll be taken care of. They become a part of the miracle, and and to me, it's uh, it's Jesus. I know I don't have no power. Hmm. It's him that does it. I was a little boy, and my first, I was probably, what, 19 years old in Sweden. My hmm. first crippled walk out of the wheelchair while I was preaching in, in a meeting, probably no more than two, 300 people, hmm. and uh, and the Lord said, I'm going to heal her. And I remember I looked, and, and it had nothing to do with me. I didn't pray for her. I had no prophecy. I just heard the Lord say, I'm going to heal her. And I, when I mm. turned, her legs began to, like, somebody just kind of began to pull them. And you could hear her go, oh, oh, she began to, like, react. Oh, like, mm. she wasn't even aware until she was already in the middle of it that she was being healed. And then all of a sudden, she stood up. And everybody in the church knew because she was a local person that everybody knew that was in a wheelchair. Mm. And so when she stood up and began to walk, uh, the service was over. The rest of the night was miracles and prayers and testimonies mm-hmm. and, and the altar call. People were getting saved a second time that night. You know, when a miracle happens, mm-hmm. even the saved people want to make sure they're saved and they come to the altar too. Wow. And that was the first miracle that I had in my ministry. Then one of my first ones, since we're talking about Africa, I, I came to Africa mm-hmm. when I was in my, between my junior and senior years of high school. I was 16 when I first came. Mm-hmm. I was, I did Kenya, Uganda, South Africa, Swaziland, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique during the war. Mm-hmm. Got shot at my first time to Africa. So I was baptized into world missions, African style. Can I say it that way to everybody? <laughs> yeah. So, and I didn't get scared and become a scared American. I kept going, but I was preaching for a, a group in Uganda, in, uh-huh. in Kampala. Okay. And they brought a lady that had a stomach cancer that was right. like she was pregnant with two children mm-hmm. and she was going to die according to that. And I went over and prayed for just a simple prayer. Some of my greatest miracles had nothing to do with volume or drama. It was just simple, like, I'll pray. I don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And as I was praying for her, her stomach began to deflate in front of all of us, just oh. begin to go down. Oh. And it took probably 10 minutes for it to become mm-hmm. a normal stomach and flat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and of course, you know, when that happens in Africa, mm-hmm. people really get excited then. Yeah, yeah. And then I had I had my first thronging, if you know what I mean by that, but people mm-hmm. throng you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All of a sudden, they no longer obeyed the little rules where everybody sat and where everybody was supposed to pray. No they all of a sudden, <laughs> boom, yeah. I didn't have my FBI agents in those days. So, and all of a sudden, my hands were being yanked here and there, every place, yeah. to just, and like, then I understood for the first time what it meant when you said he was thronged. And it's mm. not fun because desperate yeah. people are not considerate of the vessel. They want their miracle. Mm. And I remember people pulling my hands and pulling my arms different places and almost made me fall over. And the pastor and some of the men tried to hold me. Up. But it, it was a mighty moment, and I saw that happen. Mm. Now, mm. there are times I've prayed for people where nothing happened. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to talk about that. When you pray for mm. people that are desperate like that, and you walk away and you think, why didn't something happen? Mm. I don't have an answer for that. Mm. And maybe you don't either. But mm. don't let those moments stop you mm. from praying for the next person. Amen. And don't let them stop you from praying for the sick for the rest of your life. Mm. Jack Cole, when he first started his healing ministry from the 1950s tent ministry, <laughs> he said the first hundred people he prayed for stayed sick or died. He goes, but I can't go until I hit the river and it works. And so I would encourage you, just keep going until you get the river flowing and then stay in the flow for the rest of your life. You know, the reason I asked you the question, now I didn't know about the healings and miracles in your ministry, but as you were talking, God just said to me, ask him, ask him about the miracles I've done in the ministry because he's focused so many, uh, focused so much on the generals. But I've mm. also put a grace over his life. Amen. And, and, and yeah. that's why I asked you the question. 
And uh, yeah. I know you're a humble man of God. You, you, you know, you, <laughs> you don't like to be in the limelight. You want to push everyone else in, in the limelight. But, yeah. uh, you know, there is, a, there is a transference. As you've been studying mm. about these generals, there's been a transference mm. of that grace, a transference of that anointing over your life as mm. well and uh, mm. over your ministry. And uh, um, I, I also see, I'm not sure if you're doing this right now, I also see you training people in the power mm. ministry, right? Mm. The power ministry. And, and I see a school coming out of that. And uh, We're right now reworking to found or reopen our Bible school here in Florida. So that's yeah. and right now where it's actually, ha- my, my team is organizing it right now as we talk. Right. But I'm talking here about a signs and wonders ministry. Mm. Where you're training people in the supernatural. As you've been studying mm. these generals, you're training them in that. Is, is that what you're doing at the moment? Is that what yeah, you're planning to do? To me, to, spirit-filled training has to be supernatural training. Training, yes. There's no such thing as a spirit-filled person without mm. walking in the degrees of the miraculous and supernatural. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, any minister should have that, but you have to almost build a school based on that principle because yeah. if not, you just have academics. And yes. so we've always yeah. built our Bible schools. Yeah. Uh, I read years ago that, when you go to theology school, you only use 20% of what you learn in theology school. Uh-huh. So I want to focus on the 20% and then of the other 80, spirit life. Put that together with it. And yeah. then you got your good Holy there's, Ghost ministry team. There's it. There's it. There's, it, there's it. That's what I just see. I just see you doing that in the moment. And praise mm-hmm. God for that. Now, uh, before, before I go on to more stuff, I know that you wrote a book about your experiences in heaven. And we, we, we just shared a small part of it, of what you experienced in heaven. Do you, do you have a copy of the book with you right now? Where can they get that book from? I Saw you Heaven. Know, I Saw Heaven. Yeah, right. it's my first and, book I wrote. Mm-hmm. And right, how, right. Do, how does somebody get that? What, you see my logo or my website right. up there on the yeah. top of my it's head? It's the other way around. Is it the other way around? Or, or whatever it is. It's correct. It's correct. Uh, no, it's the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it all crooked? You've got it inverted. Right, You've got whatever. an inverted picture. You've got to press the invert button. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if I push a button, I lose everybody. So we'll leave it to yeah, them. So, <laughs> but, but we it's put my it on website, Roberts. Okay, robertslidon.org. Is it right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So David, you can download it. Is it, oh, is it on the screen, David? Oh, sorry, it's on the screen, Pastor. So on okay. that website, they can go Just to the go to my bookstore. Book look right. it up, and you can. It's an ebook too. So. Obviously, all the Africans, if you buy for a hard copy, it costs three times the amount of book to ship it to you. So just download the book and be happy. Right. What other books would you recommend? You know, we we know about God's generals, but what other books do you, you know, you probably might say all of them. But what do you, what other books do you, has really been your bestsellers, your popular books, and you feel that has had a great impact on people? Uh, there'd be at least two, I would say, would be uh, Breaking Controlling Powers, How to Deal with the Negative Side of Control. Right. And when anybody in life has to deal with control. And so mm-hmm. that would be a, a great book that's been a good seller. And then the other one I bought is How to Sharpen Your Discernment so you don't marry the wrong person and do business with a Christian crook. Amen. Um, that's a good book. That's a good book to now, I sell yeah. tons of that book. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not the gift of discerning the spirit. It's developing your everyday life in God to where you can see right from wrong yeah, yeah. And, and pick up things. And today, people say, well, you're judging me. No, discernment is reading the label of your actions and what you carry. I'm not accusing you of being a liar when you lie all the time. I'm not accusing you of being sexually immoral because you commit sexual adulteries all the time. That's what you are. Mm-hmm. And so people have to learn that two plus two is four, not three, and not five. And that's a part of walking with discernment. So that, that would be that book. Those would be two big books, I think, would be my teaching Amen. books. Amen. Now, everybody knows the generals because that's the brand that everybody likes. Everybody <laughs> wants to be a general. Yeah, Somebody has yeah, to be a they captain. They want to be a for captain or a foot soldier. You know, everyone's get to the top right now. <laughs> so here's one last question, and then we're going to pray. We're going to pray hey. after this. So those of you who are watching me, uh, if you, whatever your prayer needs right now, send it to us uh, on the live stream, on the live stream chat. And uh, if you don't have access to the live stream chat, you can send a WhatsApp message. It works all over the world. The WhatsApp details are on the screen. And uh, we're going to put all these prayer requests together. And I'm going to ask Pastor Roberts to pray for your need. I'm going to send it to you via WhatsApp. Um, and uh, I know, I know today... 
God's going to do miracles on this program. I also want you to tell us how you've been enjoying this program. How many of you there would love to have Dr. Roberts laid on here in South Africa? Right? Uh, and I'm going to ask another question. I haven't asked you, but I'm going to put you in the spot again like I've been doing tonight. The whole night you've been doing <laughs> <The> whole night. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are pals already. <laughs> we are friends already. Yeah. <laughs> so, how many of you would like for Pastor Roberts to open a Bible school in Africa? And I would say maybe, it, let's just make it Johannesburg, right? Because that's the hub of Africa. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm here in Johannesburg book as well. So I want to be part of that as well. So, <laughs> but how many of you would like for him to open a Bible school here? Right? And um, so send us your response on, on social media. Send us your prayer request as well. We're going we, we're gonna to still chat. And, and uh, while you are sending your prayer request and while you are sending the response, uh, Pastor, just to tell you, there is uh, so many responses coming out from people that are listening to you speak and how blessed they are and uh, 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 people are just experiencing God's presence. Uh, oh, somebody said, no, open the Bible school in Kenya. Okay, we'll, okay let's just see how many Kenyans <laughs> want it in Kenya, right? Let's just make it fair, right? So whichever part you are, you must say, open the Bible school, year in, right? And we're going to send all your responses to Pastor Roberts. Amen? Is that okay? We'll send all the responses. That's you okay. can pray about I'll it. You can pray about it from there, right? So, uh, okay. Now, you, somebody said Bible school in Africa. Is that okay? South Africa. If you say Africa, I'm taking South Africa, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Right, so, um, Pastor, Ro Pastor Roberts, we are waiting for the lockdown to end. We are in day 40. 28. We're in day 48 of the lockdown wow. here in South Africa. It's much more restrictive than in the U.S., and especially in Florida. Mm. Uh, and um, we believe the church is going to open again. Things, it'll be a new church, but things will change. But we'd love to have you in South Africa. In fact, I would love to host love to, you when you come. I'd love to come back. Right. I'd love and, to come back. I came there as a teenager. Right. Well, now, you, now you've now you grown up, so you need to come I'm, back now. I, I'm a middle-aged man now. <laughs> middle so, <-aged> yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, if you're a pastor that's also watching us, and you would love to have Pastor Roberts in your church in Africa, so also send us a request as well. And, and we'll fold all this to, to, to Pastor Roberts. Amen. I just love this man's ministry. I love his wisdom mm, and uh, his understanding of the things of the supernatural. Amen. So let's go to one more question. And we'll make this the last one, right? So that okay. they can send in the prayer request. They can send in the request. And then we'll... Uh, and tell us how you're enjoying this program. Amen. Uh, if you have any questions for Pastor Roberts, you can send it. Uh, we'll see we have time, right? I'm not going to promise you. We'll see we have time. But I want to ask uh, Dr. Roberts, the, the, the great generals of God, and uh, there's, you know, there's so many of them. Uh, in this time when the world is in crisis, what message would Catherine Coleman, uh, uh, Old oh, Roberts, A. Allen, a. Allen uh, 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 what's his name, uh, even Jack Cole, all Jack Cole, all these guys. What message would they be preaching to the world right they now? Would be, they would be asking for access to the sick people to pray for them. Uh -huh. They would Amen. not be talking. They'd be saying, can we come and pray for them? Right. They would probably say, I'll wear a mask. I'll wear the gloves. But can mm -hmm. I come and pray for the people because God uses me to heal? Amen. That's what Oral would do. That's what yeah. these guys would do. They'd be preaching... The now word of, of healing, God will heal right. you today, right. and let me pray for you. And so that's what they would be doing. They, yeah. they, they would be knocking the door down or requesting access to the sick people. And where it would be granted, they would go and pray for the people. Amen, yeah. amen, amen. You know, uh, I think God's Generals is such a powerful book because we see what God can do with an ordinary person. Mm -hmm. 
That's really the crux of it. God can take all of anyone. these guys. Yeah. All these guys are the most of them. All God gave them a second chance, and that's what made them great. You talk about their second yeah. chances. Yeah. You know, Catherine Kuhlman. Uh, when we talk about Catherine Kuhlman, we talk about her second chance, not her first, mm -hmm. not her first part. Mm -hmm. Her first part of her life was great. It was beautiful. It's one of us. She built a great church, mm -hmm. but then she married the wrong person mm -hmm. and blew the thing sky high mm -hmm. and went into an eight year drama mm -hmm. that ended in a divorce. Mm -hmm. And she walked, woke up one day and had nothing, no reputation, mm -hmm. no money, no nothing. Mm -hmm. And she walked, she, she said, I walked to a dead end street the mm -hmm. day that Catherine Kuhlman died. You know, she talked very dramatically. Wow. The day I died, I had <laughs> nothing. <good> that. <laughs> I had nothing. And I looked up and I said, Jesus, all that I have is I love you with all my heart. If you can use me, use me. And at that moment, God was trying to put a healing mantle in the earth. Amen. He'd asked Amen. three guys forced, mm -hmm. and the three guys said no. He came to a divorced, redheaded woman that had nothing and gave her a second chance, and look what it was like. Mm. So God will give people, mm. everybody watching, a mm. second chance. Now, there are some folks who won't let you have that second chance, but there's 7 billion people in the world, mm. so if 5,000 don't like you, ignore them and go meet the other 7 billion and have a great life in ministry. Right. So Amen. that was be your second chance. A second Amen. chance, everybody. You get a second chance with God. You get a second chance. Right. Now, I've heard many people talk about an impartation in the generals. Mm -hmm. Is there a link? Was there impartations for, for many of them? Or is it just their, their own hunger for God that, that brought about that uh, supernatural ministry? It was a mix. Yeah. The answer would be a mix. Mm -hmm. uh, Catherine's mantle came from Amy McPherson that came from right. Marie with Edder. So that's a whole line of healing mantle there. That's a right. mantle that's right. different than an anointing impartation. Right. Smith Wigglesworth prayed for Lester Summerall and gave, and prayed, give him a portion of my faith. And so if you yeah. knew Lester Summerall, his manner of gruffness and his ability to believe, part of that was Wigglesworth in him. Yes. And so you see some of that there. And uh, so you see then there's some people who just got up, loved God, and walked into a great ministry life. And there's no other reason that God chose them. They yeah. said yes, and it worked. So you don't have to be a man to be great. You can be a woman. You don't have to be white to be great. You can be any color. Right. You don't have to be rich or be educated. There's always somebody in history that breaks this religious protocol, mm. and God gives it to somebody like, you know, William Branham, one of the greatest prophets in three or 400 years. Mm. He was been educated. He was a hillbilly. That makes sense to people in Africa. Mm -hmm. He lived in the mountains like a hillbilly. Uh, we had a TV show here called The Beverly Hillbillies. I don't know if yes, yes. show we watched there. it. Yeah. Right. We watched it. Yeah. Okay. We well, it. he kind of lived like that in the hills, you know, that mm. kind of people. And, and God gave him that great gift, two great gifts. Mm. And he was very humble. He, he had some trouble toward the end with his belief system, but mm. he, he was a great prophet. And he's not a guy you should have a miracle like that. So mm. God likes taking people the world doesn't get mm. and making them mm. out, outstanding people for himself amen amen now if you're watching me i know that i'm just reading a few comments here while pastor roberts is preaching uh, you maybe you're out there and you're saying i need the god of the second chance and i need god to give me a second chance and you know what he's waiting is ready to give you a second chance you know, it doesn't matter how you start it's how you finish the race that's the important i always tell people this you know, uh, if I looked at my own life, I looked at so many people, mm -hmm. you know, when you start, we start, sometimes we start in a mess. And uh, 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 when we put our faith in God, we trust God. And we come to the God who gives you a second chance because he loves you. He loves you. God is able to change your situation around. Amen. He's able to take your mess. And as we say, he's able to make a message out of it. Mm -hmm. He's able to make you to be his light to the world. Amen. But he needs someone to surrender. He needs someone to say, listen, I messed up. Today, I need Jesus. So if you are that person right now and you're saying, I need Jesus. You know, it doesn't matter what you did. We don't care what you did. You know, the Bible says God is able to save us to the uttermost. 
That means there's nothing, there's nothing you could have done that will stop God from saving you. Right? He's waiting, his arms are open, and right now, he's waiting for you. So if you're saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to recommit my life to Jesus. I know right now God is just telling me there's a, there's a pastor that's watching me. You used to be in ministry and you messed up and you've been out of ministry for a year and a half. A year and a half, you've been out of ministry, but God's been pounding on your heart. Tonight, sir, it's not by chance you're watching this broadcast. God is saying, I want you home back. I want you home. I want you home. So right now, I want you to lift your hands up because I want you to surrender to Jesus. And I want you to pray this prayer. I'm going to ask my friend, Dr. Roberts, to pray and lead you back to Jesus. Dr. Roberts, um, there are several people that said, hey, we want this impartation that's on your life. We want this impartation from God's general. I'm not sure how we're going to do it, but that's you know, the Holy Spirit that does it. But I know that if we yes. pray, God will do it. Right? So yes. I'm going to ask Dr. Roberts to lead you back to Jesus, number one. And those of you who want an impartation, I want you to also stretch your hands towards the screen right now. Stretch your hands towards the screen as Dr. Roberts will lead you back to God. And he's going to pray for you right now. So if you believe God's called you into ministry, you believe, uh, 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 you believe your life is significant and every life is significant, then I want you to stretch forth your hand and say, Lord, here I am. Whatever you plan to do in my life, Lord, I surrender. Do it. Right? So stretch forth your hands and Dr. Robert is going to pray for you right now. Dr. Robert? Yes. Let's first pray for those who want to come back or accept Christ yes. as your Savior. Yeah. It's so simple. We just want you to say from the sincerity of your heart, Jesus, I need you. I accept you. Come into my life. I want your voice, your presence to be with me every day. I believe that you're the son of God and I accept you as my savior. I give myself to you totally. I no longer belong to the devil. I give myself to you, Jesus, and to the work of God. Mm. You pray that kind of prayer and just talk, Lord, like that he will accept you. He'll forgive you and give you a brand new beginning. Yes. And I pray for you that are coming back into ministry. I mm. first take authority over the Jesus. powers of the devil that yes. seduced you yes. or that came to hurt mm. you or mm. snared you. Mm. I command the darkness that calls that to get close to you for the light of God to shine where mm. you can see how the enemy worked and we break the power of those demonic attacks against your life and your mm. calling. Loose them and let them go free in Jesus. Jesus' name. I pray for you tonight that the gift of God in you come alive. I speak life back into it and I stir it back up and pull on it into the earth. I pray, Father, that you will cause them to know that you've accepted them. You want to use them. You want to ignite Amen. them again with a greater fire than they ever had. And to put them on a road that will bear much Amen. fruit Amen. and great miracles will come. Amen. Father, I pray for their families to be secure. Hallelujah. I pray Thank for the people Lord. around Thank them Lord. to Thank be the right people. Mm. Father, yeah. I pray that the wrong people get out of their life. Yes. The wrong people get out of their social life. Yes. The wrong people get out of their ministry uh, uh, ministry team. I'll say it that way. Mm. The mm. wrong people Amen. get out in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Mm. And we thank you, Father, for putting the right people in their life privately. The right mm. people in their ministries. The right people in their team. Father, let the right people be in the right spots yes. around them publicly and privately. Father, we thank you that the unity between them and their spouse will grow stronger and not weaker. And that, Father, you will give money to people. Father, people need money Hallelujah. to do life and to do their calling. And, Father, I ask that you provide supernaturally for them to have a good life, Mm -hmm. and provide for them supernaturally to have the money they need to do their ministry calling. Mm -hmm. We pray for that in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Now, Jesus. A word that I, the reason why sometimes all the money does not show up when you think is because your timing is off. Yeah. Sometimes we run faster than the time and the pace of God, uh -huh. and we get ahead and we think, where's the money? Sometimes that was a notice to me that I may be out of my sequence. Because God provides the money mm. at every step. 
So don't get angry at God Mm -hmm. and don't look at your friends in competition. Obey your calling, follow its pace. And on the road of obedience is everything you need in the time that you need it. So Father, I pray for the ministers to be at peace with the pace of their call, the growth of their call, Jesus and name. move Jesus in name. Jesus, name. Jesus' name. Amen Hallelujah. and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Kuraba Satan. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Pastor, Jesus. wow, that is just awesome. If someone watching me right now, you have a problem uh, just below your heart. There's, there's a problem there just below your heart. There's a lot of pain. And God's healing you right now, even as, as Dr. Roberts is praying. God is healing you in the name of Jesus. Someone else, you have cataracts. Well, you had cataracts. But as you've been watching this program, uh, God's power has healed you right now. Your eyes are clear. The cataracts gone. You can see me clearly. What I want you to do is all the people who are experiencing miracles right now, I want you to send us a message right now live on social media. And, and, and we will just want to read your testimonies. Amen. I'm not sure we'll, we'll, we'll have time, but we'll try to read your testimony uh, uh, before we end this feed. Amen. So, hallelujah. Kura Bahandi. Is somebody you want to pray for? Yes, there's a um, lady named Susan Howard. Susan Howard, um, you're from Dallas, Texas, and I see you're wearing your Stetson, Amen. I think it is. Yeah. All right. And Amen. God wants to touch you. Uh, you have chest problems. You have problems with breathing. And the Holy Spirit is going to touch you right now. I see your lungs opening up. I see your heart beating normally. And the palpitations are stopping right now in Jesus' Jesus name. name. Um, If you're wondering if it's you, God says, I must tell you, your son's name is Terrence. And Terrence, God's going to use you. Um, You're around eight, nine years old. And God says he's going to touch you. He's going to use you. You're going to be mighty for God. So mom, Susan Howard, that is Mm. your name. God says to me, your son has been chosen by God to be a young evangelist. He's going to mm. speak prophetically you, as well. Thank you, and Holy even Spirit. now during lockdown, God's going to use him. He's going to receive visions and dreams. Mm. God just has great plans for his life. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. There's a gentleman watching me. I'm not sure where you're from, but you've been injured in a tractor accident, a tractor accident, and it's your legs. Your legs were damaged in a tractor accident. Uh, you've been suffering, you've been angry with the world, you've been mm-hmm. angry with your family. But tonight, as you were listening to Pastor Robert speak, mm-hmm. that God is the God of second chance. You said, God, I need a second chance. Well, not only has God given you a second chance, but God has healed your legs. Now start to move your legs, start to move it. You'll find that, oh, 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 oh. There was a metal plate that, I say there was because it's now disappeared. There was a metal plate on your legs. What I want you to do is go and have it. Well, check it out. As you start walking, you know, test yourself out. Then I want you to go check this out. Get the x-ray and please send it to us. Amen. Because we love to keep all these testimonies. And we love to share it so that we build other people's faith. Amen. So your name is uh, Rory. 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 Right. Hallelujah. Kuraba sata raba hande. Rebo sika raba shata raba hando riba hande. Rebo sika raba baba bahande. There's another person. You're suffering with heart palpitations. God is healing both your heart and your back right now. Right now. What I want you to do is just to bend over. Do it slowly. Do it slowly. Bend over. Stand up. Do it again. Stand up. Then I want you to touch your heart. And you'll notice the palpitations have gone. They have gone. Amen. Mm. Send us your, a picture of yourself. We want to have it here on the live feed. And uh, uh, Pastor, uh, Dr. Roberts, if you, if you feel led to pray for anyone as well, just, you, know, okay. you can just come in. Jesse, you want to pray for anyone else as well? I do. I have two more people. But Dr. You go first. You go, you go ahead. I'll go ahead. follow you. Thank Amen. you. There's someone that needs a blood infusion. Um, I see you, you experience blueness um, in your face, in your fingers. Um, in fact, certain parts of your body turns blue and um, you need a blood infusion. I see your iron very, very low, but you also have a problem with um, the, the way your heart beats. It's not flowing the blood through all parts of your body. 
So God says, I must tell you right now, that thrombosis as well is going right now in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. In Jesus Be name. healed. Be completely healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I see you with the walking stick. You're a female. Um, you're wearing a sleeveless dress and it's just down to your knees. God says, you won't need that anymore. You won't need that anymore. And I see you um, in complete, perfect health. That is what Amen. God is giving to you Amen. right Amen. now. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. Is there someone else you want to do? You said there were two? No, I'm, I'm not allowed to actually release that now. I don't know. So two. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, have to God. I want to pray for something for everybody. I've noticed that during this virus crisis, people are having a lot of mental issues, mm -hmm. anxiety, depression. Amen. At least in America, they're talking about suicidal right. things on, on a new level. So I want to pray for everybody watching that is locked down like most of the world is. Mm -hmm. And I command depression, mental Jesus illness, de suicide spirits mm -hmm. to go from you in the name Jesus of Jesus. Name. Yes. And we ask the Spirit of God to bring peace Hallelujah. over your mind and stabilization into your mind and your emotions. Psalms 23 says he will restore your soul, your mind. I pray peace over you. I command those depression thoughts to go from you and we declare freedom in your house. We command those spirits that are inside your house that are oppressing you to get out and to leave you alone. And we invite the presence of God. We ask the angel of God to come and we thank you, Father, for the right people to cross their path and call them and talk to them. And we pray that you'll be with the spirit of faith, the spirit of victory, the spirit of joy to be over you, you. in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Thank you. And amen. 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 Wow. You know, there's people watching us from all the way from Jamaica, by the way, Pastor. Uh, wow. Jamaica, man. Good country. Yeah. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Amen. And uh, wow, Pastor, I'm just reading some of the comments here. So many people are asking for a Bible school in Africa, in Johannesburg, uh, other parts of the world. And uh, uh, is, uh, yes, there's someone who just sent a comment, by the way, you'll love this. I'm enjoying this live program. It's such an awesome presence of God around me and in my home. Praise mm. God. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, there's, there's more and more people. There's even a lot of people that are asking questions about heaven. Now, I know you have lots of questions about heaven, but if you want to get the answers, you need to get the book. Show them the book again, Pastor. Show them the book. <laughs> it's a little book. It's not a big it's a book. book. It's a little book. <laughs> I saw a heaven. Wow. Amen. It's got, it's got all the answers of Pastor Robert's experience over there. And I know you're going to be blessed by it. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly pray right now. Uh, and uh, wow, there's just so many people saying, yes, Bible school. Yes, Bible school. Yes, Bible school. So please send us your details. We're going to say it up to Pastor Robert. And then he's going to pray about it, right? And as God leads him, he'll, he'll move on that. Amen. So. And also, uh, uh, we've already invited you to Africa. Amen. I know that you... When the virus soon. is over and we can fly, I will yeah. come. Amen. Amen. No, my brother. We're going to get you translated. <laughs> well, I'll take that way too. That'd be great. I'll go that way. <laughs> Just the problem will be, we'll be getting you back to America. <laughs> <laughs> no. Right. So, I've sent you, Pastor, a whole lot of prayer requests. I'm going to ask Jesse okay. quickly to read these names. And if you could just read the names just, and yeah. uh, some of the prayer needs, but, you know, the, just the main ones. Okay. And then just the breakthrough as well. I'm going to ask Pastor Roberts, and we're going to join hands here as well. Mm -hmm. I want you just to pray for these prayer requests. And, uh, okay. and then we're going to just uh, quickly ask Pastor Roberts again, just to tell us his uh, details, how to get in contact with him and so on before we end the stream. So okay. let's pray. Don't leave the stream yet. This is very powerful. We're going to be praying for all these needs. If you did not give your name, if you didn't send in a prayer request, you can just simply put your hand towards the screen. We still will pray for you. Amen. Amen. So, Jesse, quickly. Okay, we have Sadla, Tanya, Lily with the lung problem, Jermaine, restoration of eyes. Oh, why? Here we go. Iki, Nisha's dad, legs are swollen and lower back pain. Nevi, kidney disease, diabetes. Jabalile, Sandra, Tux. 
uh, healing from skin rash, Sandra, numbness in limbs and for blood circulation, Terence, spine and diabetes, Rachel, stop smoking, severe swelling and leg pain, uh -huh. Clive, deliverance for a five-year-old boy who uses vulgar language, Okay. Rachel, that's a demon spirit, mm, yeah. miracle from stopping <laughs> Uh, well, smoking. There's a lot of smoking people over here. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then Santrum, Colleen Amen. from uh, needs healing from gout and Praise headaches. God. Josie, gangrene and aneurysm. Christine, healing in the ears. Warren, epilepsy. Parushka has two growths in her body. Mm -hmm. Roshni Singh, eczema and kidney infection. Christina needs healing in the ears. Ayusha, gluten sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Michael needs a new spine and legs. Amen. And then we have... Just through the names of the breakthroughs. Yeah, now the yeah. breakthroughs are Nevi, Mary, Charmaine, Adele, Ayumide, Gulnazi, Gifts, Candice, Mercy, Chantel, Benedict, Mary, Dominic, Jakes, Tembi, Rennie, Jerome, Jacob, Jonas, Justin, Niresh, Clive, Monica, Paul, Nelly, Jitu, Shamin. Amen. 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 Uh, Dr. Roberts, will you pray for them? Right. If you want to call yes, on the name of Father, we or lift or up them. each yeah. of these people. Yes. yes. You know them Jesus. better than all of us together. Yes. yes. We add our faith together yeah. and we come before your throne yes, Lord. to obtain mercy and what we have need of in their life. Father, you are a healing God. You've declared yourself a healing God from the beginning of time and you change not. Father, heal them that are sick mm. and give new body parts to them that need new organs or new areas of their body to be restored. We ask for that storehouse to be Jesus open name. and to begin to be emptied upon Jesus them name. today yes. that need parts yes. all over this request. Heal yes. and create. Yes. And Father, we thank I you for those it. that need breakthroughs. I see it. That you're the God of the breakthrough. <laughs> breakthrough on the area of their need and give them a lift and a turnaround. And we tell the devil no, and we say yes to heaven, and we say be healed and be free in Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. I know you received your miracle, amen, and please send us, as I said to you, send us your testimonies. Dr. Roberts, we get testimonies daily, weekly, wow. of Jesus doing the mm. most extraordinary mm. miracles. And again, you know, someone sent me a message uh, today on, on WhatsApp. And they said, wow, you're so anointed. I said, stop right there. I have never done, never performed any miracles in my life. The one that does the miracles, his name is Jesus. If you put your faith in him, he will do it. Amen? Amen. If you put your faith and trust in him, trust him, trust his word. Whatever is promised, he will perform. He's quick to perform. Amen. Now, uh, Dr. Roberts, it's been such an honor and blessing to have you on the program. And as I said to you, we, we, we'll, we'll just chat for a few minutes after we go off the feed. But um, uh, again, uh, Dave, will you put on uh, Dr. Roberts' details on the screen? Just his website. Yeah, there we go. There we go. The website is there. Your details are there, the website. Now, if you want to get more materials from Dr. Roberts, find out more about his ministry, and, and Dr. Ken, right, there's an area to say, yes, I want a partner and they can communicate what they would like to do. So that is available. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing about partnership, uh, uh, beloved, is watching, who are watching me. Paul wrote to the church in um, uh, Philippines, in Philippi. And he said to the church, I thank God for your partnership. Right. And, uh, and then he said, uh, I thank God always for your partnership. He said, God is able to complete the work he started within you. And mm. then he said something very, very, very important. You said, he said that because of this partnership, you are a partaker of my grace. Okay? That means the grace on Paul's life, the gifting, the, the wisdom, the knowledge, mm. the, you know, the anointing, mm. Everything God had released on him, those people that partnered with him, they became partakers of that grace. And when you partner with great ministries like Dr. Roberts, and, and you become a partaker of the grace that's on his life, on his ministry. Amen. God's given him tremendous wisdom, tremendous favor, uh, tremendous understanding about the supernatural. And uh, uh, he's a mighty man of God. 
and the grace that you've heard today on the program, that grace, you become a partaker of it when you partner with him. Amen. So I'm encouraging you today to partner with Dr. Roberts. I love this man. He and I have become good friends uh, recently and uh, we'll get together. When you come down here, we, we're going to give you curry, lots of curry, hot curry. Oh, you, it, you, you, you must cry. You must cry when you eat. Otherwise, it's not food. <laughs> Amen. It, okay. Scare the doctor if you do that. No, it's an experience. You must have lots of hot yes, spices. It's a true experience. Yeah. It's a true experience. It yes. Yes. Be careful, Pastor. Don't spice the water as well. Yeah, I've had it once and set you on fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you must watch my wife's cooking. Woo! Mm, 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 mm. Man, when I got married, I was crying for, I think, like 21 days. That was my. So I was cried every day for 21 days. Amen. And then my body oh. got adjusted to it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because I was still learning how to cook. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we're looking forward to that. And Dr. Roberts, I know you want to say goodbye to all the viewers. And is there anything else you want to share with them? Uh, go ahead. No, right just now. don't ever, don't ever quit or give up when it looks bad. If you're going to quit, quit when you're on top of everything, not when you're in the valley. So mm. don't quit. Keep going no matter what it looks like. And God likes you. He loves you. He'll answer your prayers right where you are today. And this virus will be over and the world will get back to normal. And we'll go out back and have our big crusades and have fun again. Amen. 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 Good deal. And remember those books. Uh, we know God's generals. What's the other two books again? The names of the other two books? Breaking, Controlling Powers, Sharpening Breaking Discernment. Con Breaking, Controlling Powers. That's, that's obviously dealing with uh, uh, witchcraft, right? And discernment. to sharpen your discernment, to sharpen your Sharpening. discernment, right? Yeah. So you can get those books online on his website. You know, uh, 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 it'll really be a blessing to you because, I mean, you've read, many of you have read God's Generals. If you didn't, you need to get a copy of that book. You need to get a copy of that. It's powerful. And of course, get these other books as well. You'll really be blessed by it. So this is Pastor Siva Mudley. And Pastor Jesse Mudley. Saying thank you for being on the live stream together with Dr. Uh, Roberts. Thank you for being thank on the live so stream. Much, we love you love so you much. All. Thank God you. God bless thank you. you. And goodbye. Amen. Bye-bye.